All right, so let's try to wrap things up for this big, momentous finale we've got here. Defend the North 27 team. Arms brought to you by 8-Way Run, sponsored by Wright AV, Tournament Edition, Combat Network, pulling together an amazing turnout for, honestly, this was really fun to commentate. Mm -hmm. This was just a great event overall. This was something not even on the schedule. Nope, this is nothing at all. We're just like, what do we do? Oh, here we go. And it's so funny, it was only like a small room just downstairs, you know? Yeah. I was just told, hey, there's an arms tournament. You want to check it out? I'm like, ah, sure, I'll watch it. And then here, here we, we are. are. Now. Yeah. Commentating Grand Finals, you're joined by Hangman and Renegades to Buzz. Mm -hmm. And we're looking at Twin Tail Dittos for Grand Finals. I wonder how many people are watching this. Who knows? Honestly, like, I want to catch the VODs after this. Yeah, right? It looks like you could follow 8-Way Run on YouTube and on Twitter at 8-Way Run. And the stream at 8wayrun.tv. Mm -hmm. Never heard of it. But hey, if you're tuned in, thanks for joining us. And we're going to be seeing Catfight versus Trap Lord Huey for Grand Finals. Trap Lord Huey having climbed his way out from loser side. And Catfight having defend, defending the winner's side. Let's see if he can come out before a bracket reset occurs. Yep. So right now we're seeing, you know, the classroom Trap Lord Huey, the, uh, the bird thing, and the chill life got the name. And then, of course, you know, Black Catfight has just been rocking the parasol. And Thunderbird. And yeah, I want to see some adaptations. Uh, I do feel like when uh, Trapwood here switched to the Parasol in Winners for the last game, he did a lot better. So I'm kind of surprised we aren't seeing that again. But you know, it's a comfort pick, just yeah. like Blueberry. He might be feeling a bit more confident now with his climb that he's had to make, really showing that the Chillers have what it takes to get around the Thunderbird and the Parasol defenses. I think that's actually one thing worth mentioning is that. You know, Trapwood Huey is coming from a big run of losers bracket, so he has a lot of momentum, and he is, like, warm, you know. Black Catfight's obviously, like, turning up right now, but, you know, he hasn't played for a little bit, potentially, so he might be a little bit cold, and need a little bit of time to, like, get back into the of things. Right. Although, well. Huey does have to take two sets from Black Catfight to win this tournament. Man, taking those sets is no no small feat. We've seen how this can this game can potentially be draining on its players with how long these matches can go on for. It's fine. We say long yet we play Smash Brothers. <laughs> our matches can go six minutes. Oh times. no, yeah. <laughs> like we're used to being in here for the long haul, and there's a chance we could be here in the long haul too. But we got to see Trap Lord Huey bring it back as first match goes in favor of Black Cat. Yep. Right now, you know. This is just looking like a repeat of Winner's Finals, so though. I'm really hoping we see some like mix up, maybe a character topic, something. Oh, and now he got the switch to the uh, the Parasol. So yeah. Oh, it's Parasol Chilla though. No Thunderbird. All right, this is a very interesting approach to this. There must be some sort of check involving the Chiller around Thunderbird and Parasol that Trap Lord is just adamant on showing us why he's utilizing this fist. And, uh, I had not seen it yet this entire tournament, to be honest, outside of the fact that it just shoots straight, so it's pretty fast. Oh, we got the Thunderbird into that. That's so much, that's what Chelda does. I was like the only hit of this game, and that is already basically the game right there. Yeah, Unless the Trap Lord Huey can make a big hit going back. This is looking like a rough scene. I really want to see Trap Lord Huey mix up his approaches, or at the very least change out of the Chiller. I feel like this Chiller, it just isn't working out. At no point have we seen it work against enemy Twin Tails, especially with this umbrella, uh, with the Parasol Thunderbird combo. And now Trap Lord oh. trying to get through with the meter, but he's not going to be able to find an opening. And the thing is, I really like how Black Catfight slows the game down. What he does is when the game's like even, you know, he's kind of going offensive, but the moment he has a lead, what he starts doing is he'll block, throw an attack out, not with the intent to hit the opponent necessarily, but he'll just throw the attack out, make a net block, and back off. And he gets a lot of distance, the opponent attacks, he blocks it, and then does the same thing. And he basically keeps the lead by making the opponent have to commit to things that he can't commit to because he's too far away. That was and excellent patience on the cat, uh, cat fight. That's it, that's a perfect. Yeah, I called that perfect like two seconds in advance. <laughs> Wait, was that not perfect? Oh. No, 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 you must have gotten Okay, like I, I never said that. Okay, erase the VODs. It's never happened. <laughs> Nuke the VODs. <laughs> It's like a tiny bit of chip damage was what uh, what allowed it to happen, but we are moving to the change fighter screen. Now, whether or not we see anyone move off the Twin Tails, I don't think so. I, I'm pretty sure we're staying with the uh, yeah the Twin Tails, although stage-wise, it seems we're moving to Ribbon Ring. Okay. So, is Twin Tails top tier needs to be banned because we see two of her in Grand Finals. Obviously, she needs some nerfs. Obviously. <sighs> <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah. Please, please, please don't respond to that seriously. I'd be mad if you do. 
fights and the fight. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, so we got, yeah, this is definitely a comfort pick from Trap Lord Hugh. We've seen him pick it quite a few times. He just likes having the extra distance. You know, right now we see Trap Lord Hugh, really hasn't thrown one punch yet. Meanwhile, Black Cat fights from throwing a few, but no one's even hit anything. They're really just trying to find the tiny openings to play as patient as possible. And it's Catfire who manages the uh, high ground, but he doesn't keep it for long. We see the first strike finally hit in favor of Lord Huey, but can he maintain that momentum? He needs to get something in order to start, you know, taking the reins back from Catfight. Yeah, especially because Catfight almost has meter. Meanwhile, Huey still has a bit to go, so just that meter is going to be so big. But that lead is pretty significant, and uh, yeah, unless Chapel Huey gets cut by a Thunderbird, he should be able to hold this for the next 47 seconds. Yeah, no, that that, that meter burner is going to really hurt Black Catfight, and I think he has to just kind of accept. Hey, this is probably not my round. Maybe if he can burn Huey's meter, force him to use it, that'd be really helpful. But we're seeing Huey play much more patiently in this, and just sort of waiting for Catfight to make these mistakes and then punish him accordingly. Although it's been very minute trades between the two of them, the percentage lead that Trap Lord is holding is now going to grow thanks to this use of meter, breaking yeah. him down to about 30% of his health. He's basically taken this game for sure, but he burned me in the process. He didn't have to, so I feel like that's a. Uh, if I'm playing Catfight, I'm going to be pretty happy about that, considering I lost this round anyway. You know, now they're just both kind of throwing attacks out, really trying to build meter up. Black Catfight has it. Um, I feel like Black Catfight's got to go for a bit more of an offensive stance, because last time he was kind of like. You know, he was very hesitant with his offense, which is not what we're used to seeing from him. Now they're both not even pressing button. They're both so afraid of each other's uh, slowdowns. This character just has fantastic tools for responding and punishing your opponents. Between the slowdowns to the aerial movement, and I'm starting to see why Trap Lord Huey opted for the chiller. The fact that it's just a very consistent range and strength compared to the Umbrella's defensive movements or Thunderbird's uh, unusual angle and stun. That being said, I don't really know about if double chiller is the way. No, it's I, working though. I like it because that way you can block an attack and so is a threat of punching the second one. So, you know, you can't really just break through the double chiller. And he always has the threat of, I'm just going to punish you. And you can really see that Black Hat Fight has to respect it. And the reason the Umbrella works so good for is because you, know, you throw a lot of attacks at the Umbrella and it stops it. But with Huey just not even blocking and instead choosing to slow it down, you know, Black Hat Fight can't commit to the Umbrellas. And right now, 30 seconds left on the clock. He's slowly dwindling down. And someone had taken a screen cap by the looks of it. Oh. Yo, guys, I know the match is hype, but don't take screen caps. Uh. <laughs> All right, so we're moving right back into the action. <laughs> and as we were saying, a little bit of a uh, percentage lead in favor of Trap Lord Huey. Now, I'm going to expect uh, Black Catfight to counter picks that man that brass max stage if he loses this because that stage favors like offensive positioning a lot more. Certainly. But right now, oh, but Black Cat Fight from the depths of the feet claws his way out and is going to take this game, I think. Oh, but we have the grab. Oh. Is that going to be enough? It's oh. going to just barely. Wow. That was clutch. That was a nice grab. All right. That was very close. So now... Moving into the situation where we're going to see the potential stage switch, and I feel like Sky Arena is going to be one of the uh, potential stages on the board. That or the Springer level. Yes. Oh, Bus Buster oh. Beach. All right. Uh, huh. The asymmetric layout of the stage, I could see why this would favor whoever ends up being the more dominant Twintel. So... And we also saw, you know, this is our first match of the set, and Black Catfight took it very convincingly here. Yeah, I just realized there's, there's no such thing as uh, Dave's stupid rule outside of Smash. So, yeah. go back to stages that they feel more comfortable with. I'm um, wondering if there's even stage bans. Probably not. <laughs> I know there's just stages that aren't allowed. But outside of that, I think there's just some picks and counter picks. Either way, Buster Beach is going to be the setting for this game three. Now, what's interesting is uh, because of that thing in the middle, um, Black Catfight's much more confident throwing out a lot of attacks, knowing that 
uh, Huey can't get close enough to use the Chilla and really punish and pressure. And you can see him being a lot more uh, liberal with all of his attacks as a result of the thing in the middle. And, and the stun from that Thunderbird is just devastating, just having opened up Trap Lord Huey. But <gasps> Trap Lord oh. Huey is responding in turn with his meter. But Trap Lord Huey is saying he is not losing this game. He's at least going to take a set at this rate. Yeah, this so man wants to reset the bracket. Yeah, oh, look at that though, yep. This is direct punish after blocking and parrying. Punish, hitting the umbrella and dodging. Oh, he gets clipped by Thunderbird. That was a great cross up. And you're already just seeing the difference in comfort because it looks like Huey is not comfortable on the stage. He might switch off chillers. He's going to stick to double chillers. He is confident in these gloves. Yeah. He wants to showcase that these arms have what it takes to be able to win out in the mirror match. However, it's certainly a hard doing. I feel like the additions to um, to Twintel's aerial movement that we see from the parasol, her drift is ever so slightly altered, and that can also be throwing off uh, Trap Lord Huey's responses. I want to go back to something you said. You said it for a second. You said he feels more comfortable in the. He wants to show Chillas how it takes to win the matchup. It might not be like he thinks he has an advantage matchup wise with the Chillas, but it might be a comfort thing. You, you know, we definitely see Black Hat fight is very comfortable with the Thunderbird and the Parasol. And he's probably very comfortable fighting against it for that same reason. So, do you really want to fight your opponent's fire with uh, a weaker fire kind of thing? Oh, did he just burn meter? He burned meter, but it really didn't do anything for him because of the uh, super exchange that was already occurring from Catfight's meter. That is a. Uh... That is an unfortunate error, and that that could have been a very big lead he held if he didn't burn the meter. I mean, he still has a lead, but like, it's a very small lead. One good punch, and that's it. And you know what? Um, building off of what you had said previously about the uh, the comfort picking with the double chillas, I feel like this is more uh, this is less how they're utilizing the arms and utilizing specifically Twintel's abilities, the ability to slow down, the ability to drift, and making use of that. Like, the arms just sort of com conform to the comfort of the character as a whole. Yeah. That's just more experience of their abilities. And now we see the double meter burn, and okay, it's gonna, gonna be Huey who's taking the lead in this. Now, I don't like how Trapler didn't use an attack there. He could've just throw some attacks out to burn extra meter. So that was a, uh, it's like a tiny inefficiency, but you know, everything counts sometimes. I mean, we've seen situations where, like, one point of damage decides the winner of a match. Yeah. Now, considering the fact that uh, you can't die off of chip damage in this game, literally a pixel can be the difference. Yep. Even for building super moves, but whatever. And now, now you see Chapel TV is, you know, he's on the back. Like, he's on the negative out. But I feel like it hasn't mattered much. Since neither character is really able to pressure the other one, I feel like the altitude difference is not coming into play at all. And I also feel like Black Cat Fight is getting a bit impatient, and you see Huey starting to read, you know, he's calling out when Cat Fight's gonna attack and just hitting it before the attacks, because once again, you know, the arcs of the Thunderbird and the slowness of the Parasol just gives the Chilla a really easy chance to just come swinging. Ooh, you see an uh -oh. opening appear, and this is looking like a fantastic opportunity for Cat Fight, racking up a solid amount of damage and taking a, a minor lead. But can he maintain it is the question. We're seeing that Trap Lord is adapting very well in the grand scheme of this set. The longer it goes, the more that he seems to have developed a game plan. Yeah, but you know, he's still losing this game. Um, you know, Catfight almost has his meter back, and Huey can't, he has to go on the offense at some point. It's 24 seconds left, and I'm sure Black Catfight is very pleased with just, you know, timing his opponent out. Why wouldn't you? They, oh, no, now he can. Now he has to do something. He has 14 seconds, makes it 13, 12. I should just count that every single second. That wouldn't be annoying at all. But yeah, no, you see it in the slowdown. He has a super. He's going to have to burn it or go for a grab. And that's 50 50. Grab or super. Well, he's deep in the corner right now. He's going to have to eat this percentage. But yep. is it going to be enough? No, yep. it is not. And he definitely gets wrong in 50 50. I think, I think he should went for grab. I feel like the super is more the obvious choice. But then again, with the slowdown effect, you just slow it down the grab. And yeah, I don't think that was a good option. It seemed like checkmate. So now, sitting here in a position where Trap Lord Huey can reset the bracket on Catfight, but can Catfight mount the offensive that he needs in order to bring things back? The momentum didn't really waver that heavily. It was just a lot of key decisions that Trap Lord Huey was making that made the difference as a whole. We see the stage picked in DNA, DNA Lab. 
And I feel that the way that Catfight approaches this character using the Thunderbird and the Parasol is really going to assist how, uh, how mm. well he shifts the momentum back into his favor. I could definitely see it. Especially because, yeah, he's just like hide behind the... Uh, the thing is also he can hide behind the pillars and that's going to really negate a lot of the advantages of the Chillis. So that's a huge deal. And you see right there, you know, Trapler tried to punch through the, the pillar and just didn't work. And now, even though uh, Trapler is the one who uses the uh, pillars defensively, notice the situation that it puts in him because overall, the uh, awareness of the stage is just pressing even further into black uh, Catfight's advantage because he's directly cornering Trapler. Yeah, I see it right now. <laughs> he's just seeing the dash behind the pillar. There's a little parry, dash forward, can't do anything off of it, says, okay, I just block. Be safe. It's a very minute lead that Trap Lord has, but he's maintaining it very well, right in the face of danger, just constantly moving around, using the slow, and stepping out of it. You see they're both kind of dashing in rhythm with each other, which is very interesting because you can dash and immediately do a slow, so it's like you can't dash and attack it. Oh, what? That was a bad drop. That, uh, especially with 24 seconds left. That was great patience. Oh, Cat that was a good bait, though. And now we see Trap Lord going in for the lead. I just want to talk about how good that bait was. He threw the grab, knowing that Black Cat Fight is going to slow it down and try to punch as a counter. And Huey says, okay, you got a counter. Super. And then he gets lead and probably took the game off that. Can he manage to maintain this lead? It's a very minute one, but he does as the clock yep. crunches its way down. And he's one game away from resetting the bracket on Black Cat Fight, who dominantly took him into losers in uh, the winner's finals. Yeah. You know, as I was saying, this character, this player, he just needed the time to assess the situation, figure out a game plan, and it seems like he really has one unlocked. And on top of that, he's been quickly adapting to what Catfight is throwing at him throughout this set. Yep, freezes him, and then there you go. And whenever Black Catfight gets frozen, he just kind of stays there and blocks. I think that could be open for Huey to actually grab him. Because with the slower arms, I think that might be safe, but I don't play this game. So. <laughs> sure, no. Yeah, no, you definitely notice he constantly blocks after he froze. I just want to point that out. Okay, this should be... That's a ton of damage. This is probably going to be game. Actually, there's 16 seconds left. Maybe he should actually burn meter and try and get something going. I feel like he shouldn't sold this out for too long. Okay, now, now this is game. I yeah. don't think there's any way he can come back here. At this point, Black Cat Fight just wants to throw attacks out. And, yeah. Just end this game as quick as possible and move it to the next one. Oh, but he's saying, no, 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 no. He's got 40 seconds on the clock. That might be all the time that he needs in order to be able to reset this bracket, but Catfight's making him work for his money right now. Yep. I swear, is Catfight switched to the double Thunderbirds? That's a, um, a new difference that's mattered so much because of the pillars. And on top of that, the long-range super really sh uh, showed off its work with the double Thunderbirds. They were able to really put in the work and they were just swarming around the trap board. Yep. And yeah, uh, Black Hat Fight is not letting this comeback happen. Yeah, these slowdowns seem really annoying for both players. It's like, I haven't seen a direct answer to the slowdowns yet. All right, so once again, going to time, it looks like Catfight's going to be bringing us into a situation where he's going to be stopping this uh, bracket reset, though. He's going to have to work a little bit harder if he's going to be able to win things out in game five. Yep, okay, we got, uh, in, now look, all the pillars are gone, so now the advantage of the double thunder, but I feel like it's pretty much negated. You know, just, the chillers are going to be so much pressure with no way to hide behind them and get away from them. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Oh, okay. look at that. That... Double Thunderbird still proving to come in clutch against the uh, the Chiller Thunderbird combo. And what I feel is assisting it is the fact that the birds are able to swoop around the height difference in the lab. Take note that Catfight is constantly sitting at the lower end of it. He's letting the birds swoop up and around into Trap Lord Huey's space. Oh, you're right. Now, like I did like a little sh jump and floated above the stairs to like try and negate any sort of height advantage Huey had for a moment. And I just hope Huey doesn't get tilted after this because uh, this is like, you know, having a pretty good lead and going like, like beating Catfight and then just Catfight making a huge comeback and kind of obliterating you like this. You don't want to let this affect you, but it might. 
This so I'm hoping Huey can keep it composed. This is a crucial moment for Trap Lord Huey right now. If he manages to stop the the reverse 3-0, he's resetting the bracket and he's taking a ton of mental momentum away from Catfight. Yeah. You can see it both. At least one of them's thinking right now. Looks like Catfight yeah, taking a break. I'm trying to think about what he wants to do. Huey seems like he's in the zone. He probably just wants to keep going because even though he lost that game, he has momentum. Game uh -oh. 5 is bringing us to Buster Beach. Ooh. This is a dangerous pick. I, we'll see what happens. This is going to be a very hype match. And we're seeing that both of these players seem to be dedicating into their double picks. Double Thunderbird, th double Chillers. Trap Lord Huey versus Catfight is going to be Game 5 here on Buster Beach. Just remember that Trap Lord Huey is from Yuzu, so he wins this. He resets the bracket for his Black Catfight, who is up and down out, dominated everyone. But these adaptations from Huey are immaculate, as we are seeing, you know, quite the change in playstyles. I was honestly expecting the set to just be another clean sweep as well. And we see that uh, Black Catfight is sticking to double Thunderbirds. Maybe figure out an answer, maybe if the parasols aren't quite effective anymore. We're seeing Catfight approaching with these uh, double Thunderbirds close in, and the pressure game is just immense. The fact that Catfight's able to effectively move in with these grabs, despite how effective the birds are at long range, just showing. Uh oh, he's in the corner. Oh no, he's in the corner. He's deep really in the corner bad. too. He and you see that Catfight is just warning him in there. Okay, use the meter to get out of that. That is good, but he's still in the corner. He has to get out now. That was an excellent sense of meter usage from Trap Lord Huey, preventing what could have been a fatal situation. He gets out of the corner, gets a grab, and he has a slight. Oh, he has a decent lead now. Yeah, and he's blocking because he has Chilla and. Dang. Uh, this was looking like Catfight's game, but that one clutch grab read is, is paying off the dividends. But Catfight answering back with a grab. And now we have the chase now. We have 10 seconds left. These and percentages are very close, but Catfight is going to be bringing things back into his favor. I just want to note that Catfight called out the dash back from Trap Lord and punished him hard with that. Really small read, but in these kind of situations, any read like that matters. And we're one game away from potentially uh, Black Catfight taking this one over Strap Lord Huey after what I can say a oh, tremendous struggle where he was up the set. Yeah, regardless of the outcome, both of these players oh. have just showcased a fantastic sense of mental fortitude right now. And but it's right. Catfight who's looking to make sure that he comes out on top. And I think once again, Catfight called out the dash preemptively from Huey and calling out these preemptive dashes, reading where his opponent's gonna go. Uh oh, but Huey's not letting this happen. He blocks, parries, dashes forward, and gets a punish with his super. And uh, we have 67, 65 seconds of the clock for Huey to figure something out now. He cannot play defensive. If he does play Catfight, control pace the match, and call out these dashes one more time, that's game. And Trap Lord Huey now sitting at 20%. This could be the final stretch that Black Cat Fight needs. He's got 50 seconds left on the clock, and the <gasps> pressure is not letting That's up. It. We have the grab, and there the we have over. it. And you have your champion, Black Cat Fight. <sighs> Momentous struggle. Give it up for Black Cat Fight. Also, give it up for Trap Lord Huey. He made a really good fight as well. They Both these players duked it out, made a really entertaining fight, and they both deserve a lot of props. Absolutely.